final round of questions, we've got the same question for each of the panelists, and that is, where are we today in terms of where you see manufacturing in New Jersey? What is it going to take to be successful for our state and our companies? Um, thanks, Jane. You know, uh, I think it's quite obvious that some manufacturing, probably a lot of manufacturing, has left New Jersey. But, but what has left New Jersey really is the sort of low value add manufacturing, the, the low margin value dense, dense manufacturing, making hundreds and thousands and millions of parts. The manufacturing that remains in New Jersey, at least from what I can see, is um, tightly niched manufacturing businesses very similar to Bob, Tim's, and, and, and my business. We have some core competencies. We've got um, a tight knit group of customers that we can service. Um, and we've got that competitive advantage that allows us to be a manufacturer in a high cost state. And at least in Falstrom companies, uh, case we compete with people in North Carolina we compete with people in Minnesota we compete with people in um, rural parts of Connecticut so um, it's that kind of niche that allows us to uh, continue on I think that in terms of coming back uh, I was at a, a presentation a few weeks ago where some some folks from the Brookings Institution presented data that they looked at at manufacturing, and, and they've come to the conclusion that New Jersey may actually be in something they're calling a manufacturing moment, um, and that uh, New Jersey can compete in manufacturing. Some of our largest <coughs> segments of manufacturing in New Jersey are uh, rubber and plastics, like, Bob, like our businesses up here, fabricated metals, food and beverage, and, and their findings also showed that these larger segments of smaller businesses, you know, we've got these clusters of people that do some of the same things, are actually more in, innovative. That the, the niche focus allows, allows us to be a little more creative in how we go about running our business. Um, a smaller size lets us be a little more nimble. We can react to the market a little quicker. Um, and New Jersey, being located on the East Coast, and if you look at, you know, basically from, let's say, Massachusetts down to North Carolina, you know, that, this part of the country has, um, you know, the, the richest source of customer base for manufacturers. And so, you know, and I think Tim mentioned it, you want to be close to your customer. It's, it's important to be close. So, as a smaller manufacturer, I think New Jersey can be a great location. Um, are, are the good old days of large factories with thousands of employees, is that going to happen in New Jersey? I don't think so. But um, in order to be successful, and I think companies can continue to be successful in manufacturing, um, you got to know your niche, you got to know your customer base, you got to find ways to be innovative, you have to use your smaller size to your advantage. And, and I think, um, I like to be a little optimistic, I think at the state level, some folks are starting to get it in our elected and appointed officials. And they're, they're looking for ways to support manufacturing because they realize that, um, you know, a strong manufacturing base means a strong economy, whether it's in the state or whether it's in the nation. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, uh, you're nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough place to do business. It has been. It left. We're trying to get it back. Regardless of what the manufacturer, the pharmaceutical has gone through a tremendous upheaval here in the last, what, 12 years or so? Uh, and it's about the people and trying to keep people here. It's a global business, a global world market. Uh, and we, we want creativity. We need creativity. And just now, again, as Cliff mentioned, the secondary schools, community colleges, colleges are starting to trying to uh, incentivize that again, get people and students interested in manufacturing, whether it's my type of business or your business. Uh, NGIT, great school, Stevens, great school, Rutgers, great school. And, and we as manufacturers, we, we right, have to do a little more trying to pull those students through and tell them, yeah, there is a career here. Because right now, people haven't gone to the secondary schools and to the counselors and saying, you know, 
not everybody should be going to college. It's not should be college preparedness, but career preparedness. And that's really what's happening right now. There's a lot of talk going on about that. Uh, a little bit more what Cliff said about you know, there are some external things that, that uh, we have to look for and try to help influence as well, and one of it is legislative uh, decision making. I went to a, a meeting years ago when uh, Governor Corzine was there, and, and it was a big auditorium at Monmouth Community College, and I was way in the back in the nosebleed section, and, and somebody got up and said, well, what do you think about manufacturing? And he stood up in the podium with his microphone and he goes, well, it's, it's not important. It's not on our list. Wow. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> For me, you know, but it wasn't important to him. And, and that's how they, they managed and administered. Uh, not getting political, but, uh, but the current administration thinks differently. Right? I mean, they do. I mean, it, you need employers. You need something going on. Conversion, create wealth, like his wealth, the rich man on the side. You know, <laughs> but, but you know, converting things. It's not all McDonald's. You need McDonald's. Like, you need <laughs> but we give it back. <laughs> But you need to convert things, and you need to have the right legislative bodies and help. You know, it's a global market. We don't want a free ride. No, but none of us here want a free ride. We want to even play for the best we can, and then be as creative as we can. Thanks, Bob. How about you, Tim? Sure, I, I'd echo that, uh, that about the, uh, the government. I, I, you know, we we compete against uh, in our industry against a lot of guys that uh, are are in uh, doing business in central. In centralized governments like China, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, even Indonesia for the most part, and um, you know, there's, if you think they're communists, uh, you're, you're wrong. They're capitalists, and uh, uh, with a communist government on top of them, and there can be some real advantages to that. And, and I think what we really need to do, uh, I, I'm optimistic about manufacturing here. I'm optimistic about manufacturing in general because I've been doing it for 32 years, but. Uh, we, we really need to do a full court press because that's what people are doing against us right now. They, they, they are able to, with government assistance, uh, do the types of training that we, we talked about needing, do the types of structure that we talked about, and, and we really need to partner with our government here in New Jersey in, in programs like John's and, uh, and schools to, to, to really leverage you know, what we can do against these people. I think we have great and creative people in the United States and I've, I've been impressed. But there are great creative people around the world, too. It's, it's a very tough, competitive environment. And even, even when the deck isn't stacked against you, which it is a lot of times. So I, 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 think, uh, I think our success will be directly proportional to our ability to use all elements of our society here, government, educational systems, and, and the businesses to, to work together. And, and we can be very competitive if we do that. Thanks, and that uh, leads over to you, John, MEP. There's a couple of facts that uh, I've read recently that have really intrigued me. I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal who said that New Jersey has more technical people, engineers, scientists, etc., per capita than any other place on Earth. That intrigued the heck out of me. What was missing from that article to me was what were the ages? You know, as, as you said, the, the baby boom, uh, you know, because a lot of the kids that I work with, and I work with an awful lot of them, the ones that are going into engineering and stuff, they're not staying here. And, and that's a concern for me. It's a brain drain, you know. Another fact uh, I, I read recently is uh, that for every one manufacturing job, it leads to four or five additional jobs. So if we say in New Jersey we have 300,000 plus manufacturing jobs, do the math. It's a significant impact beyond just the companies that we deal with. And, and that's the important fact. And, and to echo what these guys are saying, we, we've we got to think about it. New Jersey is difficult. The, one of the businesses that I sold, the reason why I sold it was because the state wouldn't let me move it without a tremendous DEP uh, review. And there was nothing pointing to, there was no problem. And after $200,000, it was clean. Why did we waste $200,000 when we could have spent and invested in people? And, and we've gotten better, but we've also got to invest 
across the board. I love the county college system. So I sit on met various committees at CCM, know Ed you all very, very closely and love his engineering program that's up there. Um, and the NJMEP works a great deal with the with the county college systems because it's important. But beyond that, we've got to all look at what we want to do. We have to invest in our children and talk to them positively about opportunities that, that exist not only in manufacturing but technical programs throughout and in new jersey it's not a bad place to live i know we take a lot of beatings but i'm not going anywhere i've been here my whole life and i'm, I'm glad and proud that i've been here my whole life when you talk about the colleges like rutgers and jit and C, <laughs> wow a lot of states don't have these things and i'm not knocking i'm just proud of being here but this goes across the board. It goes to the people, it goes to our school systems, it goes to our state, and it goes to our manufacturers. We got to invest in ourselves. You know, we and many of them are. Many of them are putting back into it. And I think, as I said, I even have used this word too much tonight, but I've seen a tremendous evolution. It's changing, and that's okay, because I think that makes us better. Because having smaller companies that can react and do an amazing amount of things, and I just visited Cliff's company not long ago for no other reason than just I wanted to wander around because that's why I wanted to be an engineer anyway. That's what rich guys do. <laughs> you know, one comment from Jane and now I'm in trouble. For my People at lunch this, uh, now I'm screwed. You know? But anyway, the point being <laughs> is that we all have to invest in what, what is our future. I think our future can be bright, will be bright, but I think we got to get all pieces, and we don't. The government is better in the sense that I think it sees that it needs to invest in, in a variety of things, not just tourism. You know, only so many of us work for tourism, so you know, we need to push a lot of things.